In this guide, we will share strategies for grant spending and ways you can document your expenses. The information contained here has been prepared by Civitas Strategies Early Start and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies Early Start team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. The publication and distribution of this information is not intended to create and receive, does not constitute an attorney, client, or any other advisory relationship. Reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. In today's conversation, we will learn about the Child Care Counts Stabilization Payment Program, explore ways you can use your grant funds, consider a few grant spending strategies, and think on ways you can document your spending. Wisconsin received funding from the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, to develop and implement the Child Care Counts Stabilization Payment Program. Wisconsin has distributed funding to help child care businesses address the impacts of COVID-19, including increased costs of programming and a statewide staffing crisis. The funds have allowed child care providers to make strategic investments in their programs to strengthen their operations and sustain services for our children and families that are furthest from opportunity. A total of $351 million in funds has been made available and will be distributed in Wisconsin through two programs targeting the challenges early care and education providers are facing. Regulated child care providers will be eligible to receive monthly payments through 2023, providing the financial stability they need to stay open, enhance and invest in programming, recruit and retain qualified staff, and continue providing high quality care for children. Information about the two programs are Payment Program A, which is increasing access to high quality care. This payment program is intended to ensure high quality care is available across the state by supporting the costs to remain in regulatory compliance, enhance health and safety practices, and promote continuous quality improvement. Payment program B, funding workforce recruitment and retention. This payment program is intended to support the costs associated with recruiting and retaining high quality early care and education providers through funding to increase compensation and provide professional development opportunities. For more information about the stabilization payment program, including the schedule to provide updates and submit applications, please see the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families website. Continue watching this video to better understand what types of expenses are considered allowable for coverage by the stabilization funds how to make sure you have proper documentation of these expenses, and ideas for spending strategies that are allowable and provide ways to strengthen your program, both in the near and long term. How can I use my grant funds? Generally, grant funds can be used to support maintaining childcare business and program operations. Once awarded, funds must be spent within 120 days from the date of payment letter. Understanding that the grant can cover current and future expenses, it is best to use the funds in accordance with what's allowable and will help you make, remain in operation. While the list of specific expenses may vary depending upon what is considered necessary for each individual operation, the following business-related costs are generally considered allowable uses for the Child Care Counts Stabilization Payments. Payroll, including self-pay and owner's draws for sole proprietorships. Staff benefits, including paid leave and support to access COVID-19 vaccines, appointments, and managing side effects. Professional development or continuing education. Employment and personnel costs, including bonuses, temporary or permanent increases in compensation, hazard pay, rent. Now there's additional guidance for the family child care programs that we'll discuss later in this video. Mortgage, there's also additional guidance for family child care programs. Utility costs, there's some additional guidance for family child care programs on this. And property taxes, similarly, there's additional guidance for those family, family child care programs. And lastly, insurance related to the business or um, employee, employee benefits. 
Additional allowable uses for the Child Care Account Stabilization Payment Program include personal protective equipment, PPE, cleaning supplies, program and learning supplies and educational materials, indoor and outdoor equipment, business software and technology upgrades, office supplies, transportation, meaning vehicles and maintenance, um, minor repairs such as construction and major renovations are not considered allowable, food, mental health consultation services and support for children and staff, and co-payment or tuition payment relief. Family child care providers can use funds toward the list of allowable expenses. However, some expenses have both business use and personal use associated with them. For example, your monthly mortgage or rent for your home. While the Department of Children and Families allows family child care programs to use grant funds for 100% of these costs, you are allowed to determine the percentages of these expenses that are strictly for the business. Calculating time space percentages for your business is also required for tax filings. To utilize it for the CCC stabilization payments as well would both align those together. We have a helpful resource with this guide that can help you through this calculation. If you already have your time space percentage calculated from last year's taxes, you can use that. Having a spending strategy is key to investing your grant funds effectively and properly. While the investment provides an opportunity to sustain and strengthen your business, it also needs to be spent in compliance with the funding requirements. It's best to perform a brief needs assessment for your program, asking the following key questions. For invest investment area one, financial resiliency, what past expenses do I have documentation for that also fall into the allowable spending categories for the program? What expenses have I put off because I could not afford to pay them? What are the main threats to my business's sustainability and how can I use these funds to minimize them? Am I prepared to respond to financial emergencies? How can my spending strategy allow me to con contribute to an emergency savings fund? Under investment area two, staffing, Staffing is the engine that keeps this program running. How do I reward my staff and invest in myself so that my business can continue to operate? How can I provide ways to help staff, including sole proprietors, continue their education or receive training? Investment area three, enrollment. Am I having difficulty maintaining or boosting enrollment in my program? How can I use these funds to support marketing efforts? Investment area four, facility improvements, technology, or equipment. Do I need to make minor improvements to my home or center? Do I need to make minor improvements to my playground or outdoor area? Am I prepared to carry out an emergency disaster plan? If you're on a corrective action plan with the Department of Children and Families, think about whether you can incorporate any additional resources to help you come into compliance on key health and safety standards. Are there pieces of equipment, software, or technology that would improve my program operations? Once you've answered these questions, you may have a good idea of how you wish to allocate your grant funds. The next section of this video will provide you with the actions to consider to execute your strategy. Spending strategies for investment area one, financial resiliency. Do you need to make up for lost revenue? The financial impact of the pandemic on childcare businesses cannot be understated. Many programs have grappled with closures, decreased enrollment, and inconsistent attendance rates, which contributed to a significant loss in revenue. Many childcare business owners took out loans, dipped into savings, and paused paying themselves to manage. Grant funds can support your recovery from those losses and help restore wages. Many businesses took on debt to, to survive the pandemic. Regardless of the source of the debt, the Small Business Administration's Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL, or other commercial debt, accumulated debt makes it significantly harder for your business to recover. 
Typically, your monthly debt payments consist of a percentage of your remaining loan principal balance. The higher this balance, the higher the interest you pay each month. This is called compound interest, meaning your interest is charged on your interest over time. Prioritizing paying down this debt is a sound strategy that will help you continue to serve families and reposition your business's ability to make a profit by reducing your monthly costs. As this image illustrates, this strategy will help free up reven revenue to use on other necessary expenses your program needs to operate. In addition to paying down debt, funds can be used to keep up with other routine payments while you get back on your feet. For example, if you are having trouble affording regular expenses, such as utilities or home payments, mortgage or rent, you may be able to use these funds to keep operations going until conditions have stabilized for you. Two other questions to consider for spending strategies in Investment Area 1, Financial Resiliency. Are you prepared for financial emergencies? Certainly, the pandemic has driven up costs of existing expenses, created new expenses, and has contributed to less income for you. This makes budgeting for your new reality a key feature of your plan for continued operations. Not planning or accounting for these new expenses in upcoming emergencies could put your business in jeopardy of permanent closure. A monthly budget may be a good place to start for a smaller operation like a home-based family child care program. Once you're comfortable with the process of budgeting, a six-month cash flow may be the next option for tracking incoming and outgoing funds. Once you have an idea of what your budget will allow, you should consider putting aside funds for a rainy day. It's recommended that a business have three months worth of expenses available in an emergency fund so that you can continue to meet your routine bills during times of financial challenges. Do you have the systems in place to manage your financial and other record keeping responsibilities? Having a defined way of tracking your revenue and expenses will make it easier to follow through with your decision to follow a budget. Having accurate information to inform your budget will strengthen your ability to bounce back. Many providers can track their finances with a basic bookkeeping system and a business bank account. Initially, this tracking can be as simple as having a method to log weekly revenues from tuition and payments, the expenses that you've had to pay, and store records of those transactions or receipts. Once you have those business basics down, you may consider the use of electronic systems to track these with more ease. Online systems such as FreshBooks, QuickBooks and Gusto can help with bookkeeping and payroll. These systems can give you real-time information on your financial outlook and help you make necessary decisions. These systems will also aid you during tax time so that you can complete an accurate tax return. Keeping good records is essential to managing your business in general. In addition to the standard accounting tools we mentioned, you need to track child and staff data, attendance rates, meals, and more. Be sure to also consider child, ca child care management systems, CCMS, for these needs. Systems such as Alliance Core, Brightwill, Wonder School, ProCare, or EasyCare can help with billing, attendance, etc. Let's look at spending strategies for Investment Area 2, Staffing. Are you having difficulty maintaining staff, recruiting new staff, or looking for ways to reward your staff? A staple feature of the stabilization payment program is that the funds can be used to meet the pressing challenges that the staffing crisis has presented. Now more than ever, staffing is an integral component of the child care business model. Without the necessary staffing in place, other components of the business's ability to operate are at risk. Using grant funds for temporary pay increases and bonuses is a great way to push much needed funding into the child care labor force, invest in yourself as a business owner, and reward your hardworking employees if applicable. Finding ways to increase staff retention may require multiple approaches. There could be some quick actions that you could implement to aid in retention, such as offering a bonus or a temporary pay differential, pay substitutes to give your staff some additional time off, and other ways to acknowledge and reward staff. There are also longer term approaches, such as increasing your pay scale, staff benefits, paid time off, and supporting staff career development. 
Most, if not all, of these strategies will have buzz budget implications. It is advised that you plan for them in your budget to understand what you can afford. For more information on structuring and offering these incentives, see How Can I Financially Invest in My Staff with Temporary Pay Increases or Bonuses. This resource is available on this website. The same strategies that can be applied in your pursuit of attracting qualified staff um, in, in a highly competitive employment market, you should consider using grant funds to offer a sign-on bonus for new employees and offer employee referral, referral incentives to existing staff. The bonus can be timed and structured in a way that aids in retention for your new staff. For example, a new staff member will receive their bonus after six months on the job with satisfactory performance. Other spending strategies concerning investment area to staffing. While compensation is likely the number one factor in someone choosing to enter and stay in a job, benefits are also a critical piece of their decision. There are many benefits to offering or enhancing benefits, and here are a few of them. Improved staff satisfaction, which aids in increased staff retention. Happy and healthy employees are more engaged employees. Benefits make the employer more competitive in a tight labor, labor market. This is what could separate you from another program offering similar pay. And benefits let staff know that they are valued and that you're supportive of their needs. The pandemic has brought on different needs and considerations for employees, and they need a place of work that could meet those needs. Providing benefits does not have to be an all or nothing concept. Different benefits can be offered with varying price points. Some may be little to no cost, some may be more significant. Even small increases can make a big difference in a tight labor market. You may be wondering where to start and what your options are. Most importantly, you want to be sure that regardless of what is being offered, your employees can one, see the value in the benefits, and two, easily understand them, and finally three, easily access them. While this is not a complete list, here are some of the common benefits that an, a company can offer employees. Paid time off, also known as PTO, health insurance, retirement, supplemental insurance, including employee assistance programs, tuition assistance and staff development, child care, programs in Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, Tiers 1 and 2, can purchase telemedicine and teletherapy for between $8 to $13 per month per employee through Applied Health Docs. To learn more about these offerings, you can begin by researching traditional insurance providers. You may find that your existing payroll company or other online payroll service providers like Gusto or Zenefits can provide you with certain benefits. There are also professional employer organizations and shared services networks and other platforms for collaboration, such as your local chamber of commerce, that may offer other benefits, to, other ways to provide benefits for your staff or dis discounts to do so. Outside of offering company-sponsored health insurance, you can still support your employees on an individual basis in accessing low-cost or free health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. Ensure that employees are aware of what they may qualify for and facilitate a connection for them to work with a free healthcare navigator who can walk them through their options. A few more spending strategies concerning investment area to staffing. Do you pay yourself? As a staff person of the child care program, you can and should pay yourself regularly. While this may be the last thing on your mind when it comes to your list of expenses, it should not be neglected and should be treated as any other payroll obligation. To determine how much you should pay yourself, you could begin by drafting a monthly budget and tracking your actual revenue and expenses to understand how much you typically take in and pay out in expenses for the month. This will allow you to see what a reasonable wage may be, noting that if you are a sole proprietor, your pay cannot exceed your revenue. Any payments to owners should be treated as you would any other pay. If you receive payments as a W-2 employee, then you would use the same documentation as you would for any paid employee. You will need to record payments to yourself and having a business bank account can help you in this process. 
This will allow you to separate personal from business funds and help you track your payments. Would you like to continue education or training for your staff or yourself? Staff benefits range from pay to benefits that impact career satisfaction. Providing opportunities to invest in your staff and advance their skills will benefit the quality of your program while possibly aiding in the retention of qualified staff. An investment in your staff can pave the way for new art, music, and reading programs, as well as new child learning techniques. These programs can also make your child care business more appealing to families and help stabilize enrollment over time. For family child care providers, scheduling time for professional development can be a challenge. You could use the additional funds to cover the cost of expenses associated with the time off or site closures for you to take the, the professional development days or pay for the additional staff coverage you may need to attend trainings. Funds can also be used to cover any staff travel expenses or per diems associated with professional development. Now let's turn our attention to spending strategies for investment area three, enrollment. Are you having difficulty maintaining or boosting enrollment at your program? The pandemic has spotlighted the need for childcare businesses to rethink their marketing efforts, tools, and strategies to drive or simply maintain child enrollment. Typically, marketing efforts would be the first expense cut from the already tight operating budgets for most programs. However, now that securing enrollments is more critical than ever, it is wise to consider using this funding to conduct marketing activities. Marketing for child care centers can also focus on recruitment in order to ensure classrooms are fully staffed. This could consist of designing and purchasing promotional materials such as flyers and brochures, starting or upgrading a program website, upgrading signage, offering parent incentives to enroll, and purchasing paid ads. Some no-cost activities could be done to support your enrollment, such as actively maintaining your wait list and reaching out to those families as soon as you have an opening. Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network members at all tiers can register for leg up. For our final spending strategies investment area four, facility improvements, technology, or equipment, let's consider a few questions. Do you need to make improvements to your home or center? You may have a list of program quality or health and safety improvements that need to happen to your facility. Investing in your facility can help you meet different business goals and aid in a better overall experience for the children and adults that occupy the facility. In addition to the health and safety needs that you may adapt to, grant funds can help you finally address some of those much needed long-term investments. A note of facility improvements. Just remember that stabilization funds may not be used for capital investments, such as new construction or major renovations to your facility. If you are planning to do or recently completed a major renovation, make sure that your stabilization grant funds are put toward other allowable expenses, such as rent or utilities or wages for staff, the unrestricted revenue sources you originally used or would use for these allowable expenses, such as parent tuition payments, can then cover costs associated with major capital expenses. Navigating a facility improvement project and finding a good contractor can be challenging. So we have included some tips at the, the end of this video. Young children are very success, susceptible to their environments. It may be helpful to have a facility home assessment done to learn how to improve the environmental health of your facility, such as air quality and water quality. Air quality improvement examples are HVAC repairs, duct cleaning, humidifier and or portable air cleaners or purifiers. Providers can contact an HVAC specialist to determine what can be done to improve air quality. Water quality improvement examples are replacing old corroded pipes that may be subject to lead or co and copper com contamin contamination. Providers can contact their local health department for water testing. Another consideration for the spending strategies investment area for facility improvements, technology or equipment. Do you need to make playground or outdoor area improvements? Another potential use for funds is to upgrade your playground and outdoor space for safety and quality purposes. 
Through these improvements, you can create an area that will be more developmentally appropriate and enjoyable for the children you serve. Outdoor play spaces are often a big factor for families when choosing a program, so improved play space can also potentially impact your revenue by attracting new families as well as retaining the ones you have. Here are a few ideas to consider for upgrades to your outdoor area. Play structures and equipment, rubber surfacing, payment repair, updated fencing, additional riding toys, outdoor, outdoor toys to push and pull, tunnels or structures to crawl through, upgraded water or sand play areas, materials for outdoor creative art or STEM area, updated tricycles, balance bikes, helmets or scooters, natural play space materials, a children's garden, play tables, an art station, out, additional outdoor seating or shaded areas for book reading and outdoor lessons, an awning for outdoor waiting areas. Another consideration for the Spending Strategies Investment Area 4, Facility Improvements, Technology or Equipment, are there other purchases, pieces of equipment, or technology that would improve your program operations? Updating the sign-in and checkout systems used by families or caregivers, for example, an electronic system that may work, work with a child care operations system, or updating security systems or camera systems for the building, including classrooms and common areas, um, improving technology equipment such as iPads, laptops, printers, copiers, electronic filing, bookkeeping, tuition or payment uh, or tuition or fee payment systems or a child care management system, or even purchasing a van or bus to facilitate transportation to and from school or other settings. You can also consider adding other physical improvements such as a new laundry machines, replacing a refrigerator or an extra freezer, or any other kind of equipment that may make things more efficient and effective for your program. With the added sanitation demands of the pandemic, you can also add equipment like portable sinks, hand sanitizer dispensers, touchless faucets and soap dispensers, HVAC or ultraviolet air purifiers to improve indoor air quality, automatic door opener and flusher on the toilet, touch-free touch -free waste bin, steam cleaner vacuum, childcare waiting area with wall dividers, tables with clear top, tabletop dividers or individual student desks, replacement classroom carpet, carpets or flooring, dishwasher, and upgrade sanita sanitizer systems for cleaning toys and other materials in the center. And lastly, as you consider the spending strategies investment area for facility improvements, technology, or equipment, are you prepared to carry out an emergency disaster plan? While most programs are required to have emergency preparedness plans, have you thought about whether you have the necessary resources, equipment, and materials to effectively carry out your emergency plan? Here are a few ideas to consider in executing your risk management plan. Establishing or contributing to an emergency fund to cover expenses associated with emergencies, such as insurance deductibles. Emergency supplies, including portable kits for evacuation and 72-hour supply kits for sheltering in place and text messaging services, parent communication apps to be used for emergency notifications. Now that we've explored some spending strategies, let's turn our attention to ways you can document your grant spending. What do I need documentation for? Grant funds are provided upfront, so you don't have to demonstrate a need to submit documentation showing that you've already incurred expenses to apply for a child care stabilization payment program or receive payments. However, DCF does require you to submit documents to ensure compliance with grant conditions and approved expenses. You should keep records of and compile documentation of your expenses along the way. This way, you will have your records in one place and will be ready to respond to any requests for monitoring of these funds. To keep records of your expenses, you could create a digital file and scan or save them there or get a large manila envelope ready for your receipts. You must hold on to them for five years, so you will want to have a way to keep the receipts safe until you need them. Programs using a child care management system, CCMS, can use those platforms to easily store and track their receipts and expenses. 
How do I make sure I have everything I need if I am randomly selected for monitoring? The Child Care Count Stabilization Payment Program offers financial relief to child care providers across the state to support strategic rebuilding investments and help with expenses incurred because of the pandemic. Gathering information about expenses and documenting grant spending can seem daunting, but breaking down the steps can help make the process more manageable. Step one, figure out previous pandemic related expenses. First, go month by month through your recent records to review receipts you have already collected, your credit card bills, app-based system payments such as Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, and Square Cash, bank statements and canceled checks, third-party payroll systems like ADP, Gusto, or Paychex. Collect proof of payment for every cost you want to cover with the grant funds, such as a receipt or an upcoming or reoccurring invoice. Generally, allowable expenses must be necessary to maintain or resume operations. Assemble information about the following common business expenses for each month. Rent, mortgage, property taxes, and insurance. The actual amount you pay for mortgage or rent, insurance, and property taxes. DCF allows family child care providers to use 100% of these costs as business expenses for grant funds, but using time space cal calculation to determine business use portion will align with the tax fil filing. Utility costs, the actual amount you pay for utilities, must be clearly for business use, including gas, electricity, telephone, and internet. DCF allows family child care providers to use 100% of these costs as business expenses for grant funds, but using time space calculation to determine business use portion that aligns with your tax filing. Payroll, employment, and personnel costs, this includes those for W-2 employees, including yourself, and employer payment benefits, for example, retirement and health care. If you are a sole proprietor paying yourself, you need proof of payment like a payroll report or pay by check, bank transfer, or app payment documenting the mem in the memo that this was payroll for a given period. And it does not need to exceed revenue for that same period. For example, if you took in $1,000 for the month in revenue, you could not claim payroll of $1,500. Contractors, often called 1099 employees, can be included in your costs, but make sure they are classified appropriately as contractors. Employer benefit costs may also be included for company-sponsored programs offered to all employees and employer payroll taxes for unemployment insurance and other programs. Personal protective equipment, PPE, and cleaning supplies, including masks, gloves, janitorial supplies, deep cleaning and supplies, disinfectives, hand sanitizer, soap, etc. Educational and office supplies includes items necessary for your child care business, such as paper products, children's toys, or books. Educational and playground equipment includes items necessary for your program's operations, such as children's cubbies, age-appropriate climbing structures, etc. Food. This includes appropriate food and beverage purchases for children in care that have not been covered by the Child and Adult Care Food Program, CACFP. And lastly, facility improvements includes minor renovations and repairs for health and safety and security upgrades to your facility. Be sure that the costs for the renovation are properly documented and justified. It is important to know you cannot claim expenses that have already been paid for by past rounds of the Child Care Count Stabilization Grants from the CARES Act, the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, the Employment Retention Tax Credit, ERTC, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act Emergency or, or Family Leave, FFCRA, or any other stimulus and relief funding program. Shared expenses, which are applicable to family child care home providers. In some cases, such as with your telephone or your home, items are used for a mix of personal and business reasons. DCF has indicated that family child care programs can count 100% of these expenses to CCC stabilization payments, but you are allowed to utilize your time space calculation to determine shared cost percentages and align more closely to your tax information and business records. 
for your business use of phone. For phones, cell, or home, you can determine what percentage of the time has been used for business by adding the number of minutes used for business. This should only be for the business owners or employees part of the, of the bill. As an example, Jasmine's phone bill is $250 per month in total. She made 40 calls that totaled 200 minutes and the 30 calls that were for business totaled 120 minutes. Using the minutes, she could claim business use of 120 minutes divided by 200, which is 60%. If she multiplies the bill of $250 by 60%, that means she can report $150 in business costs for the CCC Stabilization Grant. Business use of home. For family child care providers that regularly use their home for business and are licensed or certified, you can allocate the cost of your home and other related expenses that you typically claim on your federal tax returns. Home-based family child care providers can determine the business use of their home using the time space calculation. This will enable you to, to calculate the percentage of your rent, mortgage, property taxes, insurance, and utility costs that can be covered by grant funding. Whether you rent or own your home, there are two steps you need to take to expense these costs. They are the same as the ones that you use for your tax return. Number one, determine the space and time of your home used for childcare. And number two, determine allowable expenses related to providing care in your home. Step two in gathering your documentation is to find your receipts. Now that you have a clear picture of the relevant expenses incurred, make sure that you have proper documentation for each expense. A receipt or other proof of payment should show, one, that you paid the expense, two, what you paid for unless it is very clear, like a utility company payment, three, the amount that you paid, four, the date that you paid it, and five, a description of the item purchased or services received. Examples of valid receipts or proof of payments are an itemized receipt from Target or Walmart or Costco, um, payment com confirmation from the electric company or a canceled check for payment to a utility, a summary re report from your payroll company, a tip, Set, search for your larger allowable expenses first to help streamline the process. These larger expenses like rent or payroll will take less time pulling together than finding multiple individual receipts for smaller expenses like learning supplies. Step three, managing your files. Even if you decide to keep a manila folder for your receipts, you may want to consider creating a digital backup of your receipts and proof of payment by taking pictures or scanning the documents. You are required to keep receipts for five years, so this will provide a backup in case something happens to the original hard copies of your receipts. Cost worksheets. While these are not required to complete, you may find these worksheets helpful to keep your spending organized. Each worksheet is broken out by expense categories. You can use as many as you need based on your costs. You can take the totals from each worksheet and enter them to get the total costs for your projected or actual spending. Here is an example of the worksheet where you can take the totals from each of the following worksheets shown next and enter them to get the total cost for your projected or actual spending. Worksheet one for rent, mortgage, property taxes, and insurance. Costs to look for your monthly rent, your monthly mortgage, property taxes for your home or center. Check your mortgage payment, they may be there. Property insurance, check your mortgage payment, they may be there. And liability insurance, insurance in case that anyone gets hurt. Enter the month the expense was, was paid, what the cost was for, the amount paid, and whether or not you have a receipt. In worksheet two, you will document your utility costs. Some costs to look for are gas, electricity, oil, 
water, sewer, telephone, cell, mobile phone, internet. Document these expenses here. Worksheet 3 will capture your payroll, employment, and personnel costs. Costs to look for are your payroll systems documents, uh, pay by check, bank transfer, or an app payment where it documents that this was for was payroll for a given period of time in the memo section, and it does not exceed revenue for the same period. For example, if you took in $1,000 for the month in revenue, you cannot claim a payroll of $1,500. Payments for benefits, including retirement and health, employer costs only, staff development trainings. Note, you can use reports from your payroll company, and this can save you time and effort. On Worksheet 4, you will capture the personal protective equipment, PPE, and cleaning supplies. Costs to look for are cleaning supplies like disinfectants, paper towels, cleaning services, masks, gloves, safety glasses, those types of things. And on our last worksheet, number five, you'll want to capture other costs. Some costs to look for are equipment and supplies, learning materials, renovations and repairs, security costs, technology upgrades, transportation costs, and other Organizing your expenses this way will help you document your spending. You may find that even though you do have the cash to invest in improvements to your home or center, it is difficult to find a good, fairly priced, reliable co contractor to complete the work. Here are some general suggestions on ways to find and vet a contractor that you can be confident will meet the needs of the job. Step one. Ask those closest to you for recommendations. Start with people you know and consider to be trusted contacts and ask about their previous experiences with contractors. You can even post on social media within your friend network to get referrals and recommendations. You may also want to consider approaching home improvement stores or other vendors that you're familiar with. The employees of those establishments may be able to provide recommendations on trusted contractors that they personally know or that they have heard others compliment. Step two, do your research. Whether someone comes to you with glowing recommendations or not, you should conduct your own search for contractors online. Through this process, you can research those that were recommended and find others. Some of the more popular and reliable sites to perform this search include Angie's List at angieslist.com, Checkbook at checkbook.org, HomeAdvisor at homeadvisor.com, who's at who's.com, and porch at porch.com. Many of these sites are free or low cost and will give you access to not only contractors but also reviews from actual users of their services. You may also want to check with your local chamber of commerce or the Better Business Bureau. Step three, conduct a phone interview. Once you've secured a few referrals, ask the contractor some questions over the phone. Ask if they are licensed and insured and can provide proof, if they typically do projects that are your size, for references on not only their work, but also from suppliers and subcontractors, those who work with them, for a list of a few past clients, the size of their project, and how it aligns with your needs. It's a plus if they are familiar with renovating childcare facilities. How many projects do they have going on at the time? Too many projects might mean they won't have the time to do your project in a quality or timely manner. If they have no projects, that may, may, may make you wonder why. Be sure to ask follow-up questions. Step four, meet in person. After the phone interview, have a face-to-face -face meeting with three or four of your top candidates. It can be difficult to find the time to meet with more than one contractor, but this is a great way to truly understand what they can offer and to get quotes for the work you need to be done. Talk about your project and timeline, making sure they understand the magnitude and complexity of it. Ask them questions about what will happen if there are unforeseen issues that come up. Ask them when they will be able to start your project and how long they think it'll take. Consider the hours that the contractor will need to complete your project. Will they need to work outside of your normal business hours so as not to disrupt programming? 
If they are working in children's areas, how are they securing the space and ensuring the safety of children and adults in the facility? In step five, call references. After meeting in person, call the former clients of those contractors you felt most comfortable with and offered competitive quotes. Ask past clients about their finished product, how long it took, how satisfied they were, and how close the final price was to the original estimate. If there is a previous client who is willing, scheduling a time to go look at the completed work, make sure it's something that's really comparable with the quality and the size of the project that you'd like to undertake. Note that this can be tricky since most individuals do not want to receive calls. It may be equally useful if the contractor has a website, pictures, or testimonials that they can share with you instead. Additional resources for early care and education can be found at the Wisconsin Early Childhood Association or WECA website. If you are not a member of the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, you can click here to learn about business training and support it offers. If you are ready to join the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, you can also click here to join.